In this video, we will learn about quadratic equations and graph them. Here you can see there are quadratic equations and graphs given. The initial problem is just to find its solutions. The solutions is when the graph touches the x-axis, as you can see over here. But look at this first problem. It doesn't touch the x-axis. There's a distance over here. That means there is no possible solutions for this particular graph. There's no solutions. And over here, you can see it touches the axis exactly on one point. There is only one solution. But here, the second question, it touches, it crosses at two points. So there are two solutions. We can take our calculators and check this out. To solve quadratic equations, you need to go to mode phi and the quadratic equations is given at three. Put in the coefficients. The coefficient before x squared is one, then we have two, and last the constant term is three, and you can see it's imaginary solution. I is having, means no solution. It's imaginary. Therefore, we write no solution when it doesn't touch the x-axis. We can check the next one out. All you need to do is put in one minus three and minus 10. And over here, we have phi and minus two. You can see phi is one solution, minus two is one more. And what about the last one? We're not getting x1 and x2 here. If we put in minus 1, minus 8, sorry, minus 8, and lastly, minus 16, the solution is only x. Minus 4 is the correct answer. 1, 2, 3, 4, minus 4. But only one solution. Can you see that? It's only 1x. That means it's touching the axis only at one point. Let's look into other problems here now they're asking us to graph these equations so i will tell you a shortcut method in the calculator all you need to do is type this equation out alpha x squared minus 10 alpha x plus 21 and now look into all the four options you will have many different options right now choose any x value i will choose say zero okay when i choose calculate at 0, what do I get? 21. We got the answer as 21. So now you should just see which of this graph touches the y-axis at 21. It's not this one. Why? Because it touches at 1. It's not this one. It touches at the negative quadrant. And over here, this is the possible answer. So you can even test by choosing some other value. I will choose 3, 5 over here. Calculate at 5. And I should get this answer. That is 1, 2, 3, 4. Yes, minus 4. So this matches. This is the correct answer. To find the solution we just now saw, it is just mode 5, 3. And over here we can see it's 3 and 7. That's how easily you can solve them up. Please do these problems by yourselves. They are also very straightforward. Now, again, the same ones. Over here the graphs and the solutions are there. Here you can see there is no solution, no real solution, because it does not touch the x-axis. And what about this type of problems? Use a quadratic equation to find two real numbers with a sum of 2 and a product of minus 24. So that means we have two real numbers. So if I take x and y as two real numbers, when I add them up, it must be equal to 2. So let me write both these numbers in terms of 1. So x and y is two random uh, real numbers. Let me leave x as it is. y I will write in terms of 2, uh, in terms of x. So I take this x to the other side will be y is equal to 2 minus x. So I can write one number as x and one more as 2 minus x. Now I know the sum is 2, right? But if I just do over here, substitute over here, it doesn't help me because I'll get back what? The same thing over here. If I just substitute over here and start solving, x, x cancels, 2 will be equal to 2. This doesn't help. But they have told the product is 24. So what I do is I'll write this first number multiplied with the second number and I must get equal to what minus 24 so now it will help me to solve I'll multiply here it will be 2x its distributive property and minus x squared equals minus 24 and now rearrange this it's minus x squared plus 2x bring this to the other side plus 24 is equal to 0 now you can easily solve it up by using calculator Let's go to mode 5 and 3 and now type the coefficients. It's minus 1 and then we have positive 2 and lastly we have 24 and the answers are 6 and minus 4. 
So those are the solutions, 6 and minus 4, which we got as well. And this is the equation which we got. Now here, you can just take this to the other side as well or change the signs because this side will be 0 equals x squared minus 2x plus minus 24, sorry. So this is equivalent. That's no problem. Even if you put this or this equation, you will get the same answers. So you can try that out. Now we have one more problem similar to just now's problem. We have two real numbers. So what I'll write is one is x. One more will be the sum is minus 15. So I can directly write minus 15 minus x. Or you can write it as x plus y is equal to minus 15. So x is equal to minus 15 minus uh, x. Sorry, y is equal to minus 15 minus x. And now when I multiply them, the product means multiplication x times minus 15 minus x will be equal to minus 54. So it'd be minus 15x minus x squared equals negative 54. And you can rearrange this. We will take all these terms to the other side. 0 equals x squared plus 15x minus 54. Put them in the calculator. Once you are in this mode, if you press on, you'll come back to the same mode. It's 1. It's plus 15 and lastly we have minus 54. The answers are 3 and minus 18. So 3 and minus 18 is the answer. So that's how we solve these problems. And now here we need to find the exact roots. You can use the quadratic formula but the best and the easy method is the calculator because it's question number 12. You'll have four options. Easily solve them up. Mode 5 and 3. The coefficients of this question number 16 is 1, 6 and lastly we have again another 6. The answer is minus 3 plus root 3. You can see here. Okay, I will tell you th that's the exact answer. Let me just show you over here. Now, where does, this, where does this lie? Because when you graph, you cannot exactly get the point. It will be somewhere in between. So what we tend to do is... If we cannot, if we do not have the calculator, we can just tell this particular solution is lying between minus 1 and minus 2. See, it's between minus 2 and minus 1. That's what we say. And the next one is in between minus 5 to minus 4. We tell the range. We don't tell the exact value. We know it's over here now, this point. It is from 0 to 1. That's what we say. 3 to 4. But since you have the calculator, you can even find the exact value easily. So that's the thing. You can easily use the equation in the calculator and graph it up. You can select the correct graph and easily tell the answers as well, the solution. Now, if it is exactly on the point, you can directly tell it's minus 6 and 6 here as well. But otherwise, if it's in between, you can just tell a range of 0 to 1. Based on the options, select the correct answer. Now, even over here, look at the options and then select the correct answers. Now, what about these? Now, the, we have got the x and y values. f of x means y values, okay? y is equal to f of x. So, we have got a table of values. How do we know where, uh, where are the zeros or where are the solutions? Now, the solutions are wherever the sign changes in the y values. Now, when you graph, right? So, imagine this is the graph. Here, the sign of the y value will be minus and over here it's plus. Whenever there is a change of sign, you have a solution. Now, here it's plus, over here it's minus, that means there's a solution. Minus plus solution. So, wherever there is a sign change, you will have a solution. You can see here, there is a sign change here. So, the, there is a zero in between over here and over here in between these two points and these two points. Since it's quadratic, it's only two, uh, two uh, answers. The graph which I had drawn just now, that was a cubic graph. You won't have that. Quadratic is always a parabola. Now, that is the solutions over here. These two, these two. Same way, you can see where's the signs changing. So, these two are the solutions. The above ones. And same thing over here. From year to year, these are the solutions. And lastly, over here. So, you can just tell in between these values. See, it's between minus 6 and minus 5 and between minus 4 and minus 3. Same thing over here and over here between minus 3, 0 and between 6 and 9. Now, we have to solve these equations again. You can directly do it in the calculator, mode 5, 3, and you'll get these answers. It's very straightforward. Now, remember here, 
you need to round off to the nearest hundredth as mentioned in the question. Now, if you go to mode five and one, uh, sorry, three, you need to put in the coefficient minus half. Now, when you write the fraction here, it will come like this, but that is the fraction symbol. Or you can directly write it as negative 0.5. It will automatically calculate for you. And even over here, you can write it as 2.5 or 5 divided by 2. Or this fraction symbol is the same thing. Here are the values. And now the answers are 3.45 because nearest 100. And over here it is minus 1.45. That's how we solve these. And we have some real world problem. Use the formula h of t, the equation is given here, where h of t is the height of an object in feet. V naught is the object's initial velocity in feet per second, and t is the time in seconds. And h naught is the initial height in feet from which the object is launched, round to the nearest tenth if necessary. Now this is the question, this is the statement, and we have to use this equation for this particular situation. Mela throws a baseball with an initial upward velocity of 32 feet per second. The baseball is released from Mela's hand at a height of 4 feet. Now initial velocity v0, height h0. Use a graphing calculator to determine how long will it take to hit the, uh, for the ball to hit the ground. Now here we have this equation h0. Now how do we solve this? Minus 16 t squared plus v0 initial velocity is 32 t plus height is 4 and it wants what to hit the ground when the when it hits the ground what is this height height of an object it's 0 this is the equation now we have to just solve this up use your calculator solve it up I've just typed in the coefficients minus 16 32 and 4 and the answers are 2.11 and minus 0.11 now here, this is the time, t is denoting time. Can you have negative time? So it's not possible. 2.11 seconds is the only answer. You can see over here, this is the equation and this is the answer. Very straightforward, the initial velocity is given, substitute over here instead of v0 and a height is given and we need to find it when it hits the ground. So just make this equal to zero, solve it up. Similarly over here, we have punter kicks a football with an initial velocity, upward velocity of 60 feet. Now, why this upward is important? Because it's plus. So here V0 is 60. The ball is two feet above the ground when his foot meets the ball. So he hits the ball when it's an edge. So it's H0 is 2. And use a graphing calculator to determine how long will it take, to uh, take for the ball to hit the ground. This H of T is 0. So solve it up. It will be minus 16 T squared. Here we have 60 T because over here it's 60 feet per second and h0 is 2. Make it equal to 0, put it in the calculator, the answer is 3.8 seconds. Now make sure if you have any negative answer, ignore that, only take the positive answer. Here we have been given the equation and the graph and we need to tell what are the exact roots. Over here, so you can see it's in between minus 4 and 2. To find the exact roots, just use the calculator and solve it up. Now we don't want the exact roots, we are just telling where is the range, where the exact roots lie. It's from minus 3 to minus 2. If you zoom it in, if you look carefully, the half is over here, minus 3. It's inside the half, so you can't tell minus 4, it should be minus 3 to minus 2. Same thing here, it's more than the half, it's more than 1 to 2. And what about this over here? We can see it's 3 is over here, so it's 3 to 4. And over here, it's in between. So you should just tell minus phi, I believe. Yes, it's minus phi and it's 3 to 4. And over here also, it's 4 to 5 and this one is minus 1 to 0. Similarly, please do the others. You can even check your answers from your calculators, mode phi 3. But if you're doing this, say, in calculator, what you need to do is you need to first simplify this. So square is over here, minus 0 0.5 x squared. Then bring this to the other side, it will be plus 6x, bring 35 to the other side, it will become minus 33 plus 18, not 35, it's 33. So you need to solve this up and then make it equal to 0 and put in the calculator. So then you'll get the answer. Solve this up and then put it up. So it'll be 15 over here, minus 15. So that's how we would solve. If your answers are, you know, direct 
it's minus two minus one then write it directly but otherwise over here it's in between three to four so you write it in between and the same thing goes over here and that's the end of this topic there are plenty of questions on this but they are very simple the same concept very straightforward problems if you have any doubts please post them in the comments and do practice more problems by yourselves